Cont continuing with our capital structure discussion, what we were talking about originally was Medigliani and Miller's Proposition 1 that said firm value is independent of leverage, and so the value of a levered firm equal the value of an unlevered firm. Then we lax in the corporate tax deduction. What we see is that firm value of a levered firm is greater than the value of an unlevered firm by the amount of the tax saving. This is the interest tax shield in perpetuity. So if taxes, tax rates don't change, this debt is perpetual, we're going to take the value of the unlevered firm plus the corporate tax rate times the amount of debt. And this is the, the present value of the tax shield. So to maximize the value of the firm, you would maximize the amount of debt you could carry. Now, what we actually see is something that more looks like this, where the value of a levered firm equals the value of an unlevered firm, plus a corporate tax shield, minus the present value of expected financial distress costs. And financial distress costs are an important topic that really need quite a bit of discussion. Um, there's a couple of things here. This is financial distress includes bankruptcy. So some books, some textbooks you may see, this is minus bankruptcy costs. Well, that is very true. Bankruptcy costs are a subset of financial distress costs. Bankruptcy costs incurred are direct and indirect. And there's a, there's a famous paper by Jerry Warner back in the late 70s that talks about financial distress, or, sorry, bankruptcy costs at railroad firms. And they conclude that while bankruptcy costs are a big number, they don't make up that big of a percentage of our overall financial distress costs. Financial distress costs often happen well before, way years before bankruptcy proceedings ever start. Financial distress costs include such things as having to pay your employees more because they don't want to work for a firm that may go out of business. It may be that you have to pay, uh, you get a, a lower price because uh, no one will enter a long-term contract with you because they think you may go out of business, um, etc. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of examples. Um, and what we want to do is look at three different topics here. We want to look at the present value. So bankruptcy financial distress costs may not happen for years after we make our decision. So when we're deciding debt versus equity, we have to make the decision now. So we have to take the present value of these costs. The expectation, so essentially we're looking at probabilities. What's the probability of us getting into financial distress? Uh, and clearly the more cyclical, the more business risk we have, the greater that probability is. A good rule of thumb would be, if you are in a cyclical firm, if you are a risky firm, you don't want to add to it financial leverage. Financial leverage and business risk, two, two levels of risk now, will just magnify things. And we really don't want to get into trouble. Financial distress costs, we have to look at the actual cost in the event that we go into bankruptcy. For instance, let's take the extreme, let's suppose we go through a liquidation. What types of assets will get more money for them? Can we get more when we sell them in a liquidation? Clearly, tangible assets are better. Um, Non-specialized, you know, firms, assets that we can use for lots of different things. If you have a specialized asset that no one else is going to want, you're not going to get much for it in bankruptcy. So you're probably going to see less debt. Those assets make, less, make worse collateral. You're not going to have as much debt. So three things we're looking at. We're looking at the present value, we're looking at the expectation, the probability of getting into financial distress costs, and we're looking at what the actual costs are in the event that we get into financial distress. A couple things to remember here, the more tangible the product is, the more, it's, it's called the, you know, the tangible the product, the more likely we are we can afford debt, and the more stable our earnings, the more likely we are to afford debt. On the other hand, if we are in a cyclical industry, that sells a credence good, a credence good is a good that you can't judge the quality of just by looking at it, you're probably going to want to have less debt. Because I can't assure the, uh, the customer that my product is good, that I didn't cut corners somewhere. Uh, the whole idea of flying by a balance sheet, where you want to fly on the safest airline, you better look at their balance sheet first to make sure they've kept up with maintenance, etc. When we look at this, what we find is that each industry has an optimal target area. Um, firms may vary independently for lots of different reasons, but as a group, we are pretty good at picking or at determining industry-wide uh, leverage ratios. We can predict with great certainty that computer hardware manufacturers, which have assets in place, that they, they're actually something tangible, have more debt than a computer software company, whose assets are largely people and therefore intangible and can walk away at the first sign of financial distress. 
We understand that. We under, we're very good at that. What we're not quite as good at is explaining individual firm difference, differences. Sometimes managers just don't like debt. For example, Apple. Apple Computer clearly could afford some debt, um, and their taxes would be reduced if they did, but it has been part of their corporate culture that we don't have debt, and consequently they do not have any debt at the present time. Overall, I think we've learned a couple important lessons uh, in the last you know, 40 years, and in fact in particular the last uh, decade, when we see that if you have a lot of debt, if you try to maximize it or optimize it, in, in Taleb's words, if you try to optimize it, you may get in trouble when that uh, eventual rainy day comes. Be it a liquidity crisis in the markets, be it a, a hurricane or an earthquake hits your shores, you're going to get in trouble. My advice would be to understand this, uh, our models, but also have a little financial slack in the system. You might, now as soon as you have slack go, you're going to end up opening the doors for more agency costs. So you're going to want to make sure your board of directors is very active in monitoring what that cash is being used for.